I figured it out everybody. What women really want is that you have all of these lands as Jerusalem by 1479 and these two achievements. It all makes sense now. Also, if we get 10,000 likes on this video, I'll be doing Knights of the Caribbean achievement where we'll be owning all of the Caribbean lands and the Mediterranean directly as Jerusalem. Guys, obviously the first thing we're going to talk about is going to be the estates, but pay close attention because they're very very different from regular estates. First off, you start with 40% crown loan, so that means you can give the plus one mana privileges and still have 10% afterwards. We're gonna give the minus 25 advisor cost reduction for all three estates as well. Patronage of the arts for the extra prestige. Expansion of zealotry as we will mainly be fighting non-Catholic nations in the early game. And a religious diplomat, which gives you 25 relations with every single Catholic nation so that means everybody here loves us they freaking love us man all right next up we're also gonna be selling titles and we're gonna be seizing crown loans right afterwards here's the deal guys we're getting 0.30 autonomy but the reality is we're getting zero autonomy because our capital cannot get any ticking autonomy. we're also gonna be recruiting two units and two galleys you also have 10% army professionalism so after you've recruited the units you can always slack and for the time being we're not recruiting any mercenaries otherwise that would lower our professionalism for each company that we recruit we're getting a claim on the byzantines and we are improving relations with the aragonese which uh, is necessary since we want to take the province of malta via our mission tree from them and after we'll also be improving with the papal states because we're a monastic order we can choose one of these six available options here and by six i mean five yes i know let's go with the local noble shall we fabricius 225 not bad Holy mother of Fabricius, yo. Five shock. What? We're going to be recruiting an admiral also. Because we are the knights, we have the ability to raid just like other pirate nations. Look at all this juicy 43 ducats from raiding this area. 53 ducats. Oh, wow. Surprisingly less ducats from uh, Alexandria. Of course, the big cheese comes from the Aegean with 75 ducats. And even some from the Byzantines. Thank you very much, Constantinople, for your generous donation. Venice will always ask you to join their trade league. You can go ahead and join that trade league. It's not like you're getting too much money from trade anyway. And it basically protects you from the Ottomans in case they attack you in the early part of the game. One more thing we're going to do is we're going to be insulting the Ottomans with a scornful insult. Which is going to give us 25 relations with all of their rivals. In our case, that is the nation of Aragon. Bringing us a lot closer to actually being able to ally them. Until that point, however, we're actually going to be attacking the Byzantines. We got a claim on the province of Corinth. They almost always allied the Serbians or the Valachians. It doesn't really make much of a difference. We should be fine in this war. We got a stronger fleet that they have. And most importantly, what you really want to do is position your ships so that when the war starts, you can instantly kill off some of their ships. We actually captured their ships. So remember to use your fleet to basically suppress their fleet. Once you have your full naval force limit and you have an admiral, you can do this mission that gives you claims on the entirety of the Aleppo and the Palestine areas for a future war against the Mamluks. Damn, this guy is a Chad. Of course we're gonna hire him. And the Siege of Athens is done. That means we can kill their armies and crush their fleets two for the price of one everybody two for the come and get your athenians and our new leader is even better than the previous one actually this is our heir remember whilst all of this is happening you want to keep on producing galleys we need to continuously have a flow of galleys incoming the ottomans have not given military access to the uh, serbians or the byzantines yet and they got a claim on byzantium so i have a strong suspicion they're gonna attack them as well now damn the byzantines just killed off half of their army over here they tried to go with their fleet and take back the south bruh you did oh would you look at that boys we can even do military tech four before anybody else can and you guessed it the ottomans decided they want a piece of the byzantine pie also so they're helping me siege down stuff because they're such good guys by doing sway the pope which requires that we get 150 relations with the pope we get full claims on the entirety of the south greek part you might think 
think about vassalizing the Byzantines, I highly recommend that you fully annex them instead, and here's why. You could vassalize and feed them back their cores, but the reality is you only have one province, and you don't even have the Greeks as an accepted culture, so we really need to grow in size more than anything else. Noise, now we can go for the full annexation and bring our troops back over to the south of Greece. Now we can also do the mission Foothold in Greece that gives us claims on the entirety of the north Greek part as well as the uh, coastline here of Anatolia. And most importantly, because we grew in size, we can definitely get the alliance with the Aragonese or very close to getting the alliance. Diplo Rep minus. Let's go ahead and get a Diplo Reputation Advisor. This should be enough. There you go. Now we can get the alliance with the Aragonese and that means we can do the next mission that requires that we have an alliance with the Aragonese as well as 150 relations and then we get the city of Malta for free from the Aragonese. For the next mission we need to have a level 3 fort here. That means we really need to make this our capital. So we're going to be investing our initial points into making it our capital and we're also going to be building a fort once we get a little bit more money which is actually going to be right now since we can now start raiding the coastline of the North African pirate nations. That is correct. We're raiding the pirates themselves. We're also getting a claim on Epirus so once that happens we're going to grow a little bit more in size. And now we have 16% crownlands from taking all of these lands for ourselves. Also don't forget guys because of the added monument in Malta, the Malta Fort, we got war score versus other religions minus 5% with up to minus 15% if we get this to level 3. You know what? A pretty big dum dum. I was getting a claim on Epirus but the reality is that I already have a claim on everything here so this is probably not my brightest moment to be honest. And they're gone forever. Arta is finished and we will let this play out. Why is my admiral dead? When did my admiral die? And we didn't capture any ships. That feels bad. But at least we managed to get a little bit of uh, naval tradition. So our navies are slightly better now. We finished building the fort in Malta. So now we have a level 3 fort here, which is the requirement for this mission. And we got 50% defensiveness in this province, bringing it up to 67% overall. And we got permanent claims on some of the cities on the coastline here. So the reality is, guys, that the Ottomans are quite struggling against the uh, Venetians in this war. And because of that, I'm going to start my war as well. Let's go ahead and slacken recruitment first. We're also going to be recruiting a lot of mercenary units. Free company. Don't mind if I do. Let's get some of these juicy 1% loans, which means we can get more mercenaries. And we're going to go for whichever company has best shock and siege pips. In our case, that is the Guardia Costa, which we can uh, recruit in Cephalonia. And we are about as ready as we will ever be. Let's uh, set Tirhana as our main war target. We're not going for the reconquest of Sugla because we want to take lands in the Balkans first. Buyashaka, and let's start going for our war target, shall we? Well, this is a great start, isn't it? We just lost the Guardia Costa, which was our best shock and siege army. To make up for that, we're going to be barraging the fort in Salanik so we can take it a little bit faster. That was faster than I was expecting it to fall. And let's not forget, it is 10 years so we can start raiding the coastlines again. Oh, now you guys are running, aren't you? Now you're freaking running, but you cannot run away from me. Oh, seriously, you go into Kirklisi? I guess you can run away from me. Ya bastards! Except I can catch you in Kirklisi, and you're done. Booyashaka! You know what? As our second government reform, we're gonna go for the mission on the high seas that offers us a lot of great bonuses. And of course, we're gonna go for the military pikes. Let's get some pikemen in the game, and by pikemen, I mean, uh, men at arms. <laughs> Luckily, we managed to isolate the Ottomans, and now they don't have any armies as far as I know on this side. Even Akoyunlu's army is in the Balkan side, so if we're fast enough, we can piece them out with some pretty decent and favorable terms. Well, I was wrong. Akoyunlu does have another army on this side, and I just changed my unit type, so if I'm unlucky, they might even attack me. Hopefully, I take this fort, though. Praise be Lord Shmagagadug, because we just took the fort. You don't know who Shmagagadug is? Well, you don't know anything, Jon Snow. And you know what? I'm gonna be taking the fight to them. Skippity do, skippity day. Oh boy, we lost the war target. Hey, at least we managed to stack wipe these guys on the other hand, right? Oh, okay, this is not good. They're actually recruiting another army on this side. I guess one of their armies got stack wiped by the Venetians. Gotta increase the speed of my sieging stuff. Damn, these Albanians are strong, man. They got stack wiped. They're not strong. They're not strong. I definitely need to barrage this fort also to take it a little bit faster. Stop trying to run away from me, Akoyunlu. It's impossible. 
Wow, that's a really good dice roll we got. We got a 9. We started this with a 9. Also, guys, I want to mention that you shouldn't be too worried about rebels enforcing in your lands. As long as they don't own at least one fort that they conquered, they cannot enforce shit. So these guys here, they don't have any forts because I deleted the fort in Moria and the one in Constantinople. I actually pulled a sneaky here and I've sieged down some of the Yakoyunlu lands. This should give them enough. Yep, now I just need to finish off the Ottomans. And they pulled another sneaky by taking the province of Tirhala with just 1,000 units I freshly recruited. This is basically so I get an extra 15 war score that I had on the minus because I didn't have the war target before. But the big problem is that the Ottomans even got the march over Crimea via the event so I really need to piece them out like right now. 185 ducats and the lands that connect my holdings in the Balkans and prevent the Ottomans from actually accessing their Balkan holdings beautiful i love this peace deal probably the best peace deal i could have gotten not to mention i now can also attack karaman and these areas and work my way into the mamluks we have been improving relations with the austrians and now that we're at peace we can get the alliance with them and soon we'll be able to get the alliance with the milanese also which is going to help us against the venetian the loans that we take are basically double in size now used to be 38 they're 64 so we can use the new loans to pay off most of the older loans hold up a second there at war with the Mamluks now? Ottoman conquest of Sinope and Sinope was allied to the Mamluks. Absolutely amazing. Can we get a massive clap in the chat for the big brain Ottomans? They literally just finished a war in which they lost 25% of their country and they're instantly going to war again. These guys are my dream nation right here. Wait, what? Personal union with Stetten. What? Stetten gets the Burgundian inheritance? Bro, no freaking way. No freaking way. <laughs> Surprisingly, Ramazan does not have any allies, so I'm gonna get a claim on them, obviously, and use this as my foothold when attacking the mammal. You might have noticed the trend, but I'm always deleting the forts that I don't need. I deleted this one, the one in Constantinople, Morea, now Rhodos. I'm only keeping the one in Gallipoli and the one in our capital. Wow, the Mamluks are in two wards now. Karakoyunlu declared on them, and they have up to 50,000 units, man. All right, and I forgot about these guys completely. Let's uh, go ahead and attack them. Booyah shaka. Let's send our troopios over there. They got 1,000 units, bro. We could call in Cyprus for this. Um, No, thank you, Cyprus. And of course, we're going to speed it up by barraging the fort. 100 days to take this. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. I legit feel like one of those jackals that's waiting for its prey to almost die. Whoa, they got 17,000 soldiers left? What? Oh, boy, this is like my golden freaking moment to attack if i wait a little bit longer medina might not join either but you know what screw it man i'm gonna attack him right now because this is i have more troops than them for christ's sake right we can also destroy their fleet and that's gonna help us out quite a bit i guess this is a naval <laughs> yeah it's a naval one yep it's definitely a naval one let's go boys let's wallalala everywhere and a second wallalala here noise now they got no fleets left well at least nothing standing i'm gonna use one one of my armies here to uh, land on Darna and kill their fleet again. And they pieced out. The Ottomans just pieced out. Woohoo! Let's go over here quickly. Take these out. And what did the Ottomans take? I have no idea what they took. But the Mamluks are completely done. Let's just uh, raffle stomp them. Oh, I see how it goes, Mamluks. I see how it goes. Oh, look at that. We got faceting in Constantinople. That's pretty freaking lucky. I wasn't even gunning for this. You know what I really hate about this game sometimes? Look at this, man. I actually actually own the freaking fort in Karak and this dude's just walking around like it's his freaking homeland or something. I mean, okay, fine, it is Mamluk homeland technically, but I'm occupying it, okay? He's not supposed to do that. We've been at war with them for quite a few years now and they're definitely okay with us taking some lands from them. We can even take a little bit of money and by little, I mean 546 ducats and I think I'm gonna go for this deal because I need to piece them out, which means I can do the Jerusalem mission. The city is ours now. Knights Templar mercenary company becomes available for hire. Wait, didn't the Knights Templar get killed out like a few hundred years ago? And restored the Hospitallers. We get until the end of the game morale of armies plus 10. Now we need to take all of this in order to do the Kingdom of Heaven mission. Fair enough. That's concentration 
all these lands and now we can core it up as well we can also assign the mamluks and the ottomans as our rivals i'm gonna rival the mamluks first since they're significantly weaker and the ottomans later on and one stability to top it off nice since we need a little bit of extra manpower let's uh slack in recruitment one more time and we got two percent professionalism more so let's go three more generals and then a little bit extra manpower again also let's get the uh, blessed ruler and the proclaim holy war both of these are going to help us out so we finished coring all of the newly conquered lands and that means that we now can recruit more units we're going to go up to full land force limit 24,000, and we even managed to get an achievement on the roads again whereas the knights we have to own constantinople jerusalem and antioch pretty easy achievement to do and of course what we're going to do next is we're going to re-establish the kingdom of jerusalem which gives us cores on the entirety of this region over here look at all these juicy things that we have in this area and of course we'll go for the new traditions and ambitions getting the jerusalemite ideas that include missionary strength manpower plus 25 percent papal influence discipline missionaries extra diplo rep not amazing ideas but not bad either it also means that we are now a crusader state and that means that we can do permanent there was Vult CBs against everyone around us. And it also means we did the achievement King of Jerusalem, whereas either the Knights or Cyprus, we can form the Kingdom of Jerusalem. So as our second idea here, we're going to go for the tolerance of the true faith. So now the first nation to fall prey to our crusade is, of course, Caramon. Baraggio Maximus increasing our siege to 7%. Royal patronage. You know what? I am full of debt, but I'm still going to go for this because we're using the Deus Vult CB we're only taking 75% AE rather than 100% making it 25% cheaper AE wise to take all the lands that Caramon has and because they cannot retreat from this province also they're gonna get stack wiped uh, right now coalition wise Ottomans and Mamluks nobody cares because you're both gonna be dead very soon concentratio and core everything up now it also means that we can accept another culture. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to accept Syrian because we do have a lot of Syrian provinces here. We started converting the province of Jaffa Kri Shova. You are Shova because you're not Catholic, okay? It makes sense. Damn it. Oh boy, we can go for combat heresy that gives us another 10% morale of Orme. And that's great actually because we're about to go to war with the uh, Ottomans. And guess what, guys? We're going to war and we're calling in both the Aragonese and the Austrians. And they got massive freaking armies dude the austrians alone have about a hundred thousand units make sure that before you declare your war you actually set your provinces of vital interest so that the austrians or whatever allies transfers to you whenever they take these provinces rather than keeping it for themselves and we got the crusade effect on us because apparently tunis who's in this war is the target of the crusade so technically it's an actual deus vult boy and random girl who probably stumbled by mistake upon this video hi so apparently they got 23,000 units here and another 19 on this side that's pretty good actually because that's gonna make it easy for us to just crush both of their armies if they're separate and not in the same side of their empire damn Crimea coming to help your boy here but looks like Austria has learned the art of surprise attack <laughs> hey you did hot diggity dog it's an easy arse war especially since the Ottomans are basically just running around they're not actually sieging anything that's mine they're sieging austrian or hungarian stuff so i'm cool with that this is actually why it's really good to always have some uh, extra mill points around guys i prefer to always barrage my forts it makes my life a lot easier that's why i also don't give a schnitzel about siege ability because it doesn't matter once you just barrage this fort is pretty much yours and guess who just arrived on the tunisian front i did because i want the city of dara for strategic jerusalem business okay it's 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 it's, it's a secret it's a secret oh i see how it is morocco you guys are sneaky giving tunisians your troops like that huh mm, i might have to have a word with you after this war i don't want to be in this war for too long this is actually okay of a deal for me i'm just gonna go ahead and take only dara because i plan on going colonial obviously so i'm gonna need dara and then snake my way into the south of morocco and so on that means we can get these guys back home now when it comes to the ottomans i'm honestly just gonna take this i do have a little bit of a coalition now but it's really not that much of it and the extra cash is gonna help me out a lot plus i now have the kosovo gold mine which is really gonna boost my economy after i dev this up to 10 production dev and guys i've seen a couple of you 
commenting in the comment section how come you still can do concentrate dev you can still do concentrate dev on certain provinces as long as it does have enough development you cannot do it in provinces where the development is very low so keep that in mind we also did not take the province ugla because we have a core in it and we can just go for a reconquest war later on if we want to but we just need to take a second and look at this beautiful jerusalem 1477 we already dominate the mediterranean and we are now the fourth greatest power in the world bruh <laughs> dude are you kidding me they're allied to the austrians but the austrian is not joining because he's malevolent and the venetians because of attitude towards me so basically i got a free albania right here we actually have a lot of loans i basically took another five loans for one percent so i can pay off another 15 but i still have a thousand ducats that i'm owing to the iron bank over here so i'm gonna sell my titles and use some of this to pay off the other four percent loans which in turn means that now i'm only paying 1.29 interest instead of the 3.4 that i was paying before i'm also quite a little bit over the force limit with my navy so i'm gonna be disbanding a few of these ships thus making my economical situation a lot more manageable finally leche has fallen that means we can completely wipe this nation from the face of the planet y'all that also means we're very close to reaching 100 over extension so let's start coring all of this up despite the fact that we formed the nation of jerusalem we can still do the knights of the caribbean achievement as jerusalem for which we need to own all of the islands in the mediterranean and all of the caribbean which is why i'm going colonial as my first idea so i can start exploring the new world but if you guys want to see that as that's going to be the next part of this saga leave a like 10,000 likes and we'll do the second part for this campaign with a special twist in it and if you enjoy the content consider subscribing i would really appreciate it i'm trying to get to 100k subs by the end of 2021 and if i make it i'll make a super cool mega campaign including all paradox games so i'll see you in the next one and i want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members patreon members as well as my twitch supporters i really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support you guys are absolutely amazing